So uh, I imagine that this is going to be about cordyceps, but I f- has he not done a video about cordyceps before? Maybe I'm just wrong because I've seen so many videos on cordyceps, even though it's the same thing every time. There are multiple different fungi, though, that control different insects, and they specialize on specific ones. Like, there are some that are specifically for, like, snails and stuff. Uh, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Is it Frank? What, what, what are you going to give me today? What are you giving me today? This episode is sponsored by Brilliant. Oh. Learn to think. I would like to learn how to think. That'd be cool. It might help me get through life a little easier. Now I'm going to tell you three stories about fungi that get a bit gnarly. But before I do, let's try and see things from the perspective of the fungus. Here is a fungus baby or spore, and one of the first things it needs to do is find food. So yeah. it often creates Same. a spore boner. Jerry, it's not called a spore boner. What is it? A germ tube? Really? All right, well, you can see the contents of the spore sort of oozing out into that germ tube, which tries to find food. Now, like the Dorito, some food that fungi like to eat comes in packaging that's hard to open. So these germ tubes have evolved ways to break through barriers. Look at this one, busts right through the cell wall of a plant using chemicals and force. And once it's in, starts making a series of tubes that start munching. This right here is Nematoctonus, a bit of an unusual spore because it can swim with the aid of its spore boner. Jerry, it's a flagellum. Anyway, this fungus hunts these tiny worms called nematodes, which are everywhere. Here you can see a whole bunch of spores clustered around the nematode's anus, as is the custom. After attaching, you can oh, see they make germ fish. tubes that enter the body, and then the fungus can eat the nematode from so the inside it. out. Remember, try and see things from the fungi's perspective. Once it's done eating, it's time to make some babies. Hell yeah. Here you can see the spores being formed and then pushed out through those tubes. Oh, that's so cool. These spores can swim, and nematodes are plentiful. So the fungus doesn't have to get too fancy about how and where they're released. But most spores aren't particularly gifted in moving. So it's quite important that they wind up close to whatever it is they eat. Fungi have evolved a number of clever ways to get the spores to the right place. But perhaps the cleverest way is getting the food itself to help out. The genus sure. Entomophthora, for example, likes to eat flies. These flies here are infected. But unlike that nematode, they're not dead. Yet, Entomophthora yeah, yeah. starts off as these specialized little spores called- They look like little eyeballs. Look at that. That's freaky. What's going on? Oh, uh, we're, we're, we're just doing a bunch of dumb shit. So many Sean's, Sean's, and Sean's attracted to this channel. True. Now question, question. Uh, Big Sean, are you from the UK? <laughs> that, that's, that'll be the real determiner on if there's something fucking weird going on here. If you tell me you're from the fucking UK, I swear to God. <laughs> called canidia, which are quite sticky, especially when they come in contact with the outside covering of a fly. Like before, they use a germ tube to create a hole in the outside of the insect. Oh, that's cool. The contents of the spore then go into the insect's blood or hemolymph. At first, the fungus just nibbles a little bit, avoiding vital organs and targeting fat cells. Their backside starts to fill up with the fungus, which takes on a creamy white appearance. Oh. Nasty. But other than that, they seem fine doing all the fly things that a fly do. But the fungus is up to something else. After about 48 hours or so, endomophthora cells start entering the fly's brain. As the number of cells in the brain increase, they seem to target a group of neurons involved in the fly's sleep-wake oh, so cycle, cool. or circadian cycle. The science hippie- Honestly though, this is also very freaky. This is some Last of Us shit right here. Now imagine if something evolved for humans. Three British Sean's, one American. All right. Well, congratulations, Big Sean. You've evaded the major stereotype of Sean's in here. Oh, you birds. Yeah, birds. When I hear birds, that's when I start thinking about going to bed. Bees know this because the fly's brain is small enough that they've been able to map it out in quite some detail. On the day the fly will die, Rabies. just around sunset, yeah, and yes, fungi can tell time, it's crazy, those cells True in the show. brain seem to trigger the fly to release juvenile hormone. This in turn creates a burst of energy in the fly. Oddly, around the same time the fly stops flying. From here on in, don't call it a fly, call it a walk. <laughs> Kill me. I mean, look at this poor bastard. 
Not only is he about to die, he's getting chased around by a giant paintbrush. All this hormone energy and the not flying seems to generally cause the fly to go up or summit. When it is suitably heighted, the fly then extends its mouth parts or proboscis. Ooh. By now, the fly isn't in very oh, good man. shape. You know, this actually makes me kind of sad. I remember years ago, I had a saltwater tank and I had a lionfish. And unfortunately, the guy, um, ha its jaw, because like, so how lionfish eat is essentially they rapidly open up their mouth to like suck in their prey, uh, but it can get stuck open. And I, the problem is that they're venomous. <laughs> they have venomous barbs that they sting you with. So, you know, fixing that with your hands is really difficult. I had to, oh God, that was a nightmare trying to get that jaw back into place. Holy shit. Oh yeah, the birds start screaming at like 4 a.m. here. The fly? I actually haven't seen the fly. And yeah, flies are fucking annoying. I don't mind them in existence. I just don't want... They love... They love to go after your face when you're sleeping. Fucking annoying little guys. For it, yeah. F yeah, eh? 10, 18 p.m. here. But I'll still be up at 4 so it's all a bit shaky. Now they don't know who makes it, either the fly or the fungus, but this adhesive starts leaking out the proboscis, which glues the fly's mouth parts to the surface. And now true. the fly is stuck. With the fly firmly in place, the fungus can now eat all the things that it's been patiently avoiding. Organs, the testes, I mean you save those for last. And in one final manipulation, the fungus causes the fly to raise its wings to get them out of the way for what happens next. With its food source is depleted, the fungus is now ready to make some babies. Here oh, you can so see cool. it engulf what remains Whoa. of the fly. And if you look close near the top, you can see the spores hitting the glass of the camera lens. The fungus that creates so these cool. specialized structures called conidiophores. You can see them emerge here in silhouette. They're little stalks with spores on the end of them, which then get shot off by a liquid cannon, shooting those little sticky conidia spores in all directions. And check this out. If the spore lands on a part of a fly that it can't infect, like a wing, it can create its own spore cannon and fire off another spore. Sporeception. Now imagine you're. Sorry. Spore cannon and fire off another spore. Sporeception. Pew. Now imagine Pew. you're an uninfected fly in the area. These deadly spores popping oh. off in all directions. I mean, it's pretty grim, <laughs> but it actually gets worse. Does in it? the process of making these spores, compounds are secreted that are essentially sexual signals, causing other flies to come over and try to have sex with the corpse. Hold on a second, guys. Sorry. Apparently, I have to read my fortune on stream. Oh. What? Oh no. Sex. Illegal sex by the look of it. What does it say? There's no fortune. <laughs> well, I definitely got the wrong one, so maybe this is yours. Read that one and tell me if it applies to me. <laughs> You're both sociable and charming. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you're charming. God, I, no fortune in my- look! I'm not even kidding, there's no fortune! It's empty! Oh. Damn it. I know, right? It's all right. We ordered a, uh, a few things of Chinese food. 
And so they thought that there was going to be like 12 people eating it, but it's really just food for us for two days. And so they sent us a shit ton of fortune cookies and stuff. I get a wild card, right? My own. Archaea is the most fascinating, interesting, and enlightening person to listen to on a daily basis. And you should watch... And everybody will watch your YouTube channel. Every day. In fact, you will get millions of views on every video. That you post daily. Yep. Absolutely. Everyone will subscribe to your page and fall in love with you. There we go. I'd buy it, yeah. <laughs> uh. Actually sexual. Okay, In the on. process of making these spores. Well, yeah, they're supposed to be specific, right? Compounds are secreted that are essentially sexual signals, causing other flies to come over and try to have sex with the corpse. I know what you're thinking. What's so bad about that? Well, remember the sticky stuff that glued the mouth parts to the surface? Well, it didn't just come out the <laughs> mouth parts. So if you try to have sex with... This, oh, I'm just going to say it. This reminds me of uh, some very funny videos of dogs I've seen on the internet. When one goes like running off and the other one is still stuck to it. Yeah, Sean, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. With this corpse, you get stuck to it. And now, not only are you infected, but you've got some explaining to do when you go to work tomorrow. And you know Dave from accounting's gonna say something like, Ooh, looks like you had an interesting weekend. And you're like, yes, it was a nice weekend, Dave. Went antiquing, planted some herbs, f***ed a corpse, and did some light spring cleaning, thank you very much. Freaking Dave. See ya. Listen, when these zombie See fungi you, come for us, we're going to need the skills to fight back. The kind of skills oh. you can learn at Brilliant.org. I mean, if movies okay. have taught me anything, we're going to have to build robot suits, and that's complicated. Yes, Luckily, Brilliant has thousands of lessons, from foundational and advanced math to AI, data science, <laughs> neural networks, and more. And there's new lessons added every month. If learning something new sounds overwhelming, you haven't tried Brilliant. It's interactive it's and focused on everyday thing. learning. Small bites that like push these. you forward at your yeah, own pace. Snap. I mean, don't expect AI to save us. It'll be off playing chess by itself. Gonna make the flesh computers do yeah, all the work. Like this is the sort of learning that gives you a leg up, both in the workforce, but also oh in God, appreciating Lizzie. the world around you. To try everything Brilliant has to offer, free, for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash zayfrank or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Brilliant is a longtime sponsor of True Facts. Please check them out today. Where were we? Oh, right. Entomophthora is not the only genus of fungi that learned how to control the insects that they eat. Ophiocordyceps is perhaps one of the most well-known. It's a bit of a show-off, really. Yeah. The genus eats all sorts of insects, but Ophiocordyceps unilateralis is particularly good at manipulating carpenter ants. Yep. The end of the infection is a lot like Entomophthora. The ant goes up, then its mouth parts are attached to a leaf or a twig, and then the fungus kills them and makes babies. The resulting ant looks a bit like Maleficent on a bad hair day. But how the fungus does it evolve? I just really want to watch Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind right now. Like, so bad. Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. So good. So good. You like bugs? You like fungus? You, like, you will like that movie independently and seems to be very different. For one, unlike Entomophthora, Ophiocordyceps cells don't enter the brain. They do, however, seem to secrete compounds that hijack the ant's central nervous system. Now, it can be hard to figure out what part the fungus is doing and what part is just the ant being really f***ing sick, but it's pretty clear as the oh, infection is... Sorry to keep interrupting, but have there been any uh, honest trailers of any of the Ghibli movies? Because if so, we need to watch those. Just saying. I, I gotta look. Can s actually, can, can someone look right now if there are any? Because we should definitely watch those. Spreads the ant is a bit broken. It starts staggering around and convulses, which means that it falls. Would be very embarrassing for a healthy ant. But it's thought that this falling helps make sure that the ant doesn't get too far up in the trees. 
and instead will stay closer to the forest floor for what happens next. Now on its final day, this wobbly ant goes out and finds itself a leaf or a twig above the forest floor. The fungus needs the ant to attach itself very firmly, but it doesn't use glue. This fungus takes over control of the ant's mouth parts. Here, this is crazy. This is what a healthy muscle cell in an ant's mandible looks like. You can even see the motor neurons coming in and connecting cool. to it. And here's what the muscle looks like when it's infected. Those are fungal cells that have surrounded the muscle. Oh. But they don't just surround the muscle, the fungal cells start connecting to each other. Oh, that's and cool. then some of them connect into the muscle itself. Oh. It's like a poorly knit sweater of fungus. If you slice through a section of the ant's jaw, you can see that the fungus is friggin' everywhere. So when it's time to get the ant to bite down, the fungus seems to be very much in control of the machinery. On a leaf, the bite is almost always around that center vein. And it's deep. Those are the bite marks. As the ant bites, the fungus destroys the muscle tissue, which makes it impossible for the ant to ever let go. Oh, At man. this height off the forest floor, the conditions are just right for the fungus to take its time. Over the That's... next week or so, the fungus consumes what's left to be eaten, and then sends up a stalk or fruiting body from just behind the head. And from here, the spore... You know what? It feels like the only... One of the only things, one of the only living things that's actually figured out how to have a pretty decent life is fungus. Like, there are so many creatures that can be infected by, like, parasites, fungus, disease. Like, like this, like, this probably doesn't even care if it gets, like, stepped on or cut. It doesn't matter. There's no- I don't know, um... I don't know if there's much that just like yeah okay there's some stuff that eats fungus like yeah there's some isopods and millipedes that live specifically on fungus but there's the thing if you eat a little bit of fungus it doesn't give a shit and good luck eating the entire mycelium because that shit could sometimes spread for like what meters or like and by meters i mean like many like maybe even like a how how big is the biggest fungus like a few kilometers or something huge Fungus, yeah. Fungus does feed off all sorts of stuff. A few miles, yeah, I thought so. It's the only one that truly figured it out. One super fungus across the whole forest. That's so cool. But yeah, fungus does feed off decay, but it also feeds off life. It eats anything. Then they're all so, like, specialized. It's crazy. It's very important, though. Fungus is incredibly important to the ecosystem. Did you guys know that there was a time when there was, like, giant fungus? And there was also a time when there uh, wasn't enough stuff decaying stuff. So there were just a bunch of stuff that just didn't decay. It took, it took longer. Well, it took a while for stuff to f figure out that it could eat other stuff and decay it. It is nature's recycling bin. And there was a point where there was no nature's recycling bin. A lot of very specific bacteria and fungus developed a little while after. 2,400 years old. That's crazy. No rune of death, IRL. Yeah. <laughs> but no, the, like, it, it, it's cool. History is really, really cool. A monster mushroom in California? I believe it. Man, that's crazy though, Sapper. Holy shit. Ors are released, ready to find an ant of their own to love and kill. Now here's the thing. Those two stories were kind of nice compared to this one. <laughs> Fungi in the genus Massaspora, which is a dad joke time bomb, have a taste for cicadas. Now some cicadas are around every year, but some species only come up every 13 to 17 years, True. all at once. And for a fungus that likes to eat them, that's a buffet worth waiting for. Yeah, these guys for are those nasty. 13 to 17 years, the cicada lives underground as a nymph. Spores of the fungus can also be found in that soil. And as these cicada nymphs begin to emerge, some of them are infected. Getting right to it, the fungus eats away the cicada's abdomen and sexual organs, which apparently they can live without. Then it creates a whole bunch of canidia spores, which form a sort of plug back there. You could say their back end is a mass of spora. <laughs> I told you. These little canidia are specially designed to quickly infect other cicadas. Now, you might think that having a half-body riddled with fungus would be a bit of a red flag in the dating world. 
But the They're fungus has some tricks. Some species of Massospora pump the cicada full of psilocybin, which is the hallucinogenic compound in magic mushrooms. And it also creates cathinone, which is a stimulant. So the infected cicadas are the life of the party. Oh my god. Could you imagine getting infected by a mushroom that just makes you trip fucking balls so you don't even remember or like know who you are or what you're doing? Jesus Christ. That's fucked. Psilocybin is fucked. Todd, what happened to your ass? Who cares? Woo! <laughs> the fungus also does something else that's quite sneaky. It somehow manipulates infected male cicadas into changing their mating call, which normally sounds like this, to sound like a female cicada, which sounds like this. I mean, the bottom line is that the fungus is able to trick a lot of cicadas into dry humping the conidia. And these little conidia start to infect their host's oh, butt. Cool, sorry, lazy. their host's butt in a different way. The fungus of these conidia infected cicadas will also devour the abdomen and genitals of their hosts. But instead of creating more conidia and trying to infect even more adults. Oh, he got, he got his fungus pushed in. Oh, that's yucky. Hundreds of golden teacher mushrooms. That's cool. I love going for walks and looking for mushrooms. I will take a picture of like every mushroom I find. I've found like fairy rings. I've I've found some really like big like amanitas and st it's so cool. I absolutely love mushrooms. They're so wicked. They fill up what used to be the abdomen with these thick-shelled spores. These infected cicadas act basically normal. However, in going about their business, they rain these thick-shelled spores down onto the ground below, where they will wait for another 13 to 17 years to infect the next cycle. Yeah, so that's how they do it. <laughs> it's so fucked up. I mean, it's hard to root for the fungus on this one, really. Athlete's foot is a fungus, do you know that? Eats yep. keratin, which is in our skin and nails. And that's the scouting party. It's just a matter of time. i tell you what, I'm gonna cinch my pants real tight. Can't make my ass fall off. I mean, the movies get it all wrong. Zombies are just gonna be people all hopped up on mushrooms and cocaine trying to get you to hump a powder ball that ate their junk. No, it always looks like that. They got little sprinkles falling out the gaps in the short pants. And then one day you see him shimmy up a flagpole and attach by deep-throating that knob on top. Dave, what you doing up there? Oh. And then he just withers away. You know, make that into a movie. Call it The Last Ass of Us. <laughs> I love his videos so much. I've been watching him for years. <sighs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Cool footage too. I love. He always gets such impressive footage. Sometimes he posts very infrequently. Sometimes he'll drop one every couple weeks. You never know. But every single time, our Lord Zay Frank drops a video, it's a good day. He's 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 a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> We like him in this house.